Right, we're in a repotting mood today, so we're going to do several repots because this is the season for it. I would just like to uh, wish all my Chinese viewers a uh, happy Chinese New Year. It's coming up in a, a day or so. But I do apologize for not wearing my red Hawaiian t-shirts because it's freezing cold and uh, I have to wear this dra drab garment. So let's take this out without any further ado. Put it on the here and we will tease away. We're going to make a bit of a mess. Show some of the surface roots that exist. Have you got a hook? Come here, do this together. I think the surface is more or less like this. Let's put something on the surface. Let's see how far it goes from the top. can tilt the tree so that I can get at the base and we will take some from the bottom. You can see how fine the fibrous roots are. A lot of fibrous roots. And this tree when I repotted it a few years ago, I made an experiment just to save on compost. I used the lightweight aggregate called Lytag. Can you see? And this is just lightweight aggregate. So it's not even bonsai soil. So we are always doing experiments because we like to try different things. So we try different things because it's only by trying different things that you learn and you progress. So it seems to have worked extremely well. Look at those beautiful leaves. Absolutely beautiful. And it's so easy to take apart. And of course the privet being such a vigorous species, um, even if you used poor soil, it wouldn't suffer at all. So look at it, again all this light time, not even bonsai soil or not even mud. Okay, we will now turn it a little bit if you can. We will use the same soil again, so not to, we're not going to waste this soil. This root hook is a Japanese root hook, and it's one of the best implements for teasing the roots. If we can now turn it this way. Lovely compact root ball. This of course has been achieved over very many years. We cut off all the thick roots and these are just the thinner roots that have produced more fibrous root. Yeah, thick roots like this we don't need because the feeder roots are the fine roots. I think this is shallow enough and now I'm going to get a bonsai pot because this is a big tree I need a pot about this size uh, and I know I have just the right pot for it 
I don't need to use ceramic pots, so I'm going to get some of the mica pots. I have a mica pot, I'll just bring it along. Right, this is a hefty pot, it's so blooming heavy, I can hardly lift it. And coming from India and China, I'm a coolie. <laughs> so here I am, it's so heavy. Oh God! <laughs> well, you'll be surprised it didn't even break. It's good ad for the mica pot. These pots are so good, even if you drop it, they don't break. How good is that? So there you are. We're going to use these lovely mica pots. Now let's put it on here and see what it looks like. Let's test it first and see if it is the right size. I think it should be right. So you manage to lift it on your own. Yeah. Strong, yeah? Oh, I think a drum pot would have been better, isn't it? Because it's a odd shape. No, this should be okay. This should be okay. So we have tested it. We need to take about four more inches from the base. So, sorry to make you lift it again. So, we thought that a drum pot might suit this tree. But I may not have a drum pot large enough. This is a drum pot I tried it in. It looks a bit small. I'll see if I have a bigger one. But if we don't have a bigger drum, then we will have to settle for the rectangular pot. Not screen that pot now, so it's a bit of We have to cut some off on it. Oh. Right, that, I think that would fit. That's nice. That's very nice. So we'll prepare the pot, but there is a thick root underneath which I have to cut because that's preventing the tree from sitting nicely. Although at that angle it may be quite good, but it's too high at the back. Can we spin this around a bit, Jack? Sorry, it's all in front of me. Spin it around. Okay, there's a thick root over here. So I'm sorry to make you do it, but if you put it on the side, we'll cut it with a saw. But if you tilt it, uh, uh, see, there's the locker. Can you try to cut that one, Jack? That entire lump. Well, I think there's a lump here.
we can cut those thick roots off because we've got such a lot of lovely feeder roots. So we're not going to waste any of this soil, we will use this stuff again, lovely stuff. Still too hard? Yeah, there's too hard, isn't it? Still too hard about that, I think we'll have to use the saw, mm. sorry to take it out, we'll take it out again. This is what it involves, so. isn't it? It's not just clean sealing, it's a lot of work in there. Oh, I put it on the side and we Find it so to cut it. Let's see if we can reduce some of this and uh, get some surface roots then it doesn't matter if it's mounded too much I can show the surface roots a bit. Oh solid. Might need to use a pressure washer. Let's show that. See, look at that. Hmm? Look at that beautiful roof there. It's all been hidden. Okay, let's try this. Yep. That's better, isn't it? That's very nice. Level it a little bit so you can put some soil in there. Compress it. See this down here. Okay, turn it on and put some soil in there.
Can you tease this bit? Now that's a crossing roof we don't want. That's, that's an ugly bit. So let's get rid of that. This is a very nice front, all a trunk. So we just keep filling it with more of this old soil, please. I'm just going around the tree to see how the surface roots are going in. They're not too bad, one or two blemishes. So we don't want any crisscrossing roots. This is okay, this is okay. Uh, this is a bit ugly, but it looks natural. But if I don't like it, let's see if I can... Oh! No, it won't break. Maybe let it rot naturally. But that is ugly. But it all, it's very natural, so I'm not too bothered. So you can see where all these thick roots were cut. They were cut hard back. And all these new fine roots have generated from there. I don't know whether the angle is correct. Let's see. No, it's okay. May need to, if I pop it up, can I just put a little more soil there? So this was the tree, if you remember when we did the first video, this tree from the toilet, uh, the bomb tree. It's nice from this side, that's why we use a drum pot in the end, because it's nice from every side. Look at it, it's nice from this side as well. Virtually every side you turn, it looks nice. So there you go. And we will show you hopefully a picture of our famous Lingfield Oak. Lingfield is our local village and there's a, I think, eight or nine hundred year old oak tree that has a completely hollow trunk and it looks just like this. So trees like this do exist in nature and they're very beautiful. So there you go. I will take a final shot after we've tied it in and put some moss. In fact, this tree is so heavy, there may not have been a case for tying it in because this tree won't go anywhere. But I will just, since I put the wires in, I must not tie it in. So there you go. Let me just tie this. of tying it in. And this hollow is quite handy because I'm passing the wire through the hollow. And we can't wait for the tree to start leafing again in the spring.
Incidentally, ever since we did the original video where we showed this tree, I've had a lot of offers to buy it, but I'm not in a rush to sell it. Okay, we'll just top it up with soil and the final shot is after we put moss on it. Right, I'm looking at this tree. I'm not too bothered about the branch structure because that I can always deal with. This needs to come down much more. This is going to be my preferred front. If I turn the tree around, that leans too much that way. This hollow is quite nice. This is also a possible front. Uh, this I may need to deal with and remove. This needs to come much lower down. This can all be achieved by wiring. I don't want to bore you with doing that. So that's going to come down like that. Uh, so this is a good front, possible front. But if we use the other side, which doesn't show the hollow, this is also very nice. But if I use this, this is ugly and this is rising. And eventually I may need to get that off because it's not exactly level. So I will just bring an appropriate saw and try and get that off. So these are the final points that we look at. These saws are all blunt because we use it for cutting soil, but it should still work. Pivot wood is very hard. I think it's cutting. I think this is still the best saw. There you are. There you are, it came off easily. So that makes it a smoother transition into the soil. So we got rid of that ugly bit. This we will take off ev eventually. I can't get rid of it. I tried to knock it with a hammer. So if we use the front, this should come off. But many people like the hollow feature. So whoever has this tree may eventually use this at the front and if we just do a little bit of cosmetics it's like applying makeup amazing what a little bit of moss does We're fortunate that we have such a lot of paved area and just from watering the trees, the dampness creates the moss and the moss just grows naturally. So I can't understand why people say that they can't get moss and they try to grow moss. I'm always amused. There's a company that sells moss spores. I don't know how effective it is. They charge quite a lot just to buy moss spores. But you can get this for free from the paving and the paths. People who come on our classes, the highlight of their bonsai workshop is putting moss on what they've created because this is the crowning glory as it were of their day's work so putting moss on the finished bonsai is always a pleasurable experience of moss but there you go so that this is the effect of the moss and that's another tree that we have done the repotting for so this one probably is going to come off so don't worry about the superstructure of the twigs because that is very easy to grow uh, but the main thing is the beauty of the trunk this cannot be changed so there we go